Oh, I see vicious. If you're the champion of the world, you gotta get him in a headlock. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Make yeah. him feel you. Take yeah. him to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Take yeah. him to the ground. There we go. Yeah. Now pin him. Pin him. One, two, three. Yeah. The new champion, Sid Vicious. Guys, 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 guys. guys. Hey, time out, time out, time out. What's going on here? Well, you know, Ronnell's gonna be here, the professional wrestler. Yeah, yeah. I, so we're I trying know. to get Sid ready for the title. Guys, two things. Number one, we got a show to do, okay? So we gotta, we gotta clean up, get ready to go here. Number two, if you're gonna do a headlock, you gotta do it right like this! Oh, yeah! 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 Always wrestling with his faith, your host of Nightlife, Tim Bergen. Okay, guys. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing and awesome Sydney. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I, I just want to send a dis disclaimer here. No people were actually hurt in the tease of this program. Just make sure I don't want anybody at home worrying about it. Welcome to Nightlife. I'm your host, Tim Bergen, and you're watching the most watched Christian show on late night television. You know, every show has a theme, and today we're talking about wrestling with your faith. But before we go there, guys, name a job that's kind of an odd job. Lion tamer. So, lion tamer. What do you think, Kellen? Fire eater. Fire eater, okay. What's an odd job, Sydney? Tree climber. Tree climber. Okay, these, these are, they're all, okay. Now, let me ask you another question. You ready? Can you do those jobs as a Christian? Can you be a lion tamer? Or, can you? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, okay, Sid, can you be a tree climber as a Christian? Of course. Okay, good. Well, yeah, see, every job it takes skills and talents to do. Every job takes a certain amount of know-how. And the Bible tells us that in James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father who created all the lights in the heavens. So the talent and skills that you have came from God. And by using them, whether you're a lion tamer or a fire eater or a tree climber, I don't know how you make money as a fire eater. Well, but anyhow, you, you honor God. So what are you doing as a hobby or a job? If you're using your God-given gifts, then you're honoring God. Where our guest today, Ron L. Hunt, is in one of those skill areas. He's a pro wrestler called The Rev. And he's ready to rumble, I think. He's going to talk to us about God using his skills and talents to impact the wrestling world. So let's get ready to get revved up and wrestle with our faith. Guys, are you ready to take us to the break? Yeah. Are you ready to rumble? Yeah. Okay. Coming on the air tonight And that life I've been waiting for this moment For all my life That life I can see it coming on the air tonight That life I've been waiting for All right, we're here with Extreme Teens, Earl and Logan. Say what's up, fellas. What's yeah. up? What's up? And we want to know, what would you do for this beautiful king-size candy bar? Woo. I'm going to jump over Logan. I'm, okay. I'm jumping over Logan. So he's going to jump over his man, Logan, right here. Let's see. Let's see what he can do, folks. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh! <laughs> Only here at Extreme Teens. I would do gymnastics. Let's see what you got. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. 
What would you do for this king size candy bar? This. Wait, wait, wait. He forgot his candy bar, but I'll talk to y'all. Okay, the real question is, what did Kirk and Kellen do with the other candy bars that were left over, and what were they doing for them? That, that's the real question. Maybe we'll find out later. Well, tonight's topic is wrestling with your faith, and there is no better person to dive into this topic than pro wrestler himself, Ronnell Hunt. And as we welcome him to the program, we like to call him the Rev. Hey. How's it going? Man. Thanks good for having to see me. You. Good to see you, sir. Woo, I'm good. I'm good. What's, uh, what's the belt? You know what? Uh, this is uh, this is actually uh, Renegade Wrestling Alliance. It's a company in West Newton, uh, West Newton, Pennsylvania. I've been working there for roughly about about six months or so, and already have struck in gold with uh, a gentleman named Wise Guy Jimmy Cicero. Him and I hold both tag team titles, and uh, it's just an extreme blessing to be one of the champions there. Wow. Now, now, when we think of uh, pro wrestlers, I, I don't. How in the world do you get into something like that? I mean, it's not like you wake up one day and say, okay, I'm a pro wrestler. Well, it's, it's definitely not not relatively as close as ballet or anything. I mean, it's something that's definitely physically involving. And uh, it's one of those things where you have to find a good training facility, you have to find someone that's, that's notable and knows what they're talking about. And uh, at the end of it, it's all about where your mindset is. Uh, I feel like personally, me, outside of the mindset, also had to deal with where I was spiritually. Once you know you have someone behind you, you know, the, the, the sky's the limit. I think that's where I'm at with my career right now. Now, your persona is the Rev. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I'm assuming that means that you're all about your faith absolutely. while you're doing this pro wrestling game. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, when, when I first started, I did not come into the, you know, the wrestling industry as a Rev. My name was actually Luke Cage. Okay. Uh, ironically, it was almost similar to the, you know, the, to the comic book character. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, once I accepted my calling in 2011, uh, one of my friends was talking to me, you know, a great friend of mine, Robbie, um, Robbie Zaccardi. And uh, he was like, maybe you need to think about doing something, you know, as in your, you know, your real life. And I said, you know what, that's a tremendous, that's a tremendous idea. And so I took on a name. I said, you know, I'm Ron now. I said, Reverend. I'm like, it doesn't have a ring to it. I'm like, the, the, the Rev, the Rev, that can work. Cool. And, um, you know, I went with it. A lot of fans enjoyed it. Um, you know, promoters and everyone enjoyed it. And I found it a way to kind of, you know, extend my ministry even outside of the traditional pulpit and Sunday. So in, in this career path, it's you establish a persona yes. and then everything is built around it. And so nobody fought you. They, they said, ah, it's too religious. It's too, you know, they, they were all on board for you to do this? I, I, think, I think a lot of things, you know, especially, you know, in today's time, you, sometimes you have to watch, you know, what exactly you're doing. But I feel like they had enough trust in me. I'm knowing my character that I wouldn't do anything that I wasn't already comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I feel they naturally had a safe, you know, had a safe haven to work with and said, you know, if that's what you want to do, we know it's not going to be anything outlandish that, you know, no one can, you know, pound their fist at and um, go with it. Tell us what your ideas are, you know, what you want to do with this. And, and we'll see where it goes from there. And it's been extremely successful. Now, is this something that you've always wanted to do? Did you grow up watching pro wrestling and saying, you know what, that's who I want to be? Oh, yes, yes. Um, actually, some of my idols that I, that, I, that I watched growing up within the wrestling business, um, guys like Shawn Michaels, um, Undertaker, The Rock, you know, kind of almost a persona of how I did The Rev, but, you know, I do it as, you know, myself. And um, these guys were the ones that when I was watching as I'm younger, you know, you wake up Saturday morning or Monday Nitro, you're with a bowl of cereal and you're watching wrestling. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I wanted to take it a step further. Um, so I was able to do that. And um, from, from then on, I've took those type of guys. And actually, some of those guys were able to mentor me and actually see some of my matches and critique me on it, which I'm, you know, definitely extremely blessed for. Now, a, a lot of people, they, they will start out with dreams. Yes. And then somewhere along the line, they let those dreams fade away. How is it that you were able to hold on, hold on to yours to where you're seeing the fulfillment of it? I think a lot of times what happens is, um, times when we have our dreams, certain people, they don't pay close attention to their circle. A lot of times we have people that we've grown up with and then as soon as, you know, we find a way to establish dreams, you know, we forget who's behind us. I think a lot of times what happens is naturally with reality, sometimes we have to cut some dead weight in our life off. Um, that's some things I had to do within my own life. You know, sometimes you don't, you don't die with the same friends you, you were born with. So there were people in your life that were kind of the naysayers saying, ah, you know what, you're never going to be anything. Absolutely. Just, just 
Yeah, because it's, I, I found that a lot of times when people want to rise to whatever their dream is, whatever their calling is, there are always those around those say, ah, you're never going to make it. All the, what I call the Eeyores from, <laughs> from Winnie the Pooh yes. that are always saying, ah, it's not going to happen. You, you, know, all, you always have those mopey people, you know, in your life. And naturally, you know, you, you can't blame them. Sometimes their past has mm -hmm. enabled them to think about that way within life in general. Um, but a lot of times I, I believe, you know, I had strong, you know, supporting fa uh, family members. I had strong supporting um, family even my church family and, and those that I surrounded myself with, even when I was in college, you know, were those that were able to, you know, stay behind me. And even when I found myself weak, you know, they were right there to pick me back up and not only be there for me, but pray with me, which I thought is something that's extremely important. Now, with the title of Rev, how does your faith play out in the in this career? Because it is it's a career path, and it, it seems to me like it is a lot of athleticism, but it seems like there's some drama obviously yes. involved in it, and and some uh, level of acting at some level. But yes. how do you how do you play your faith out so that people see? Okay, it's this isn't just a persona or a character. This is really what this guy believes. Yes. Well, um, you know, I know all th all throughout since I've became the Rev. I mean, you know, just like you said, there are those physical attributes, but then all, there's also the cinematic thing of things. Um, a lot of times within my storylines, it comes to me being some type of savior for someone, mm -hmm. you know, within that. My, my whole persona is the savior of professional wrestling. So a lot of people say, well, what does that mean? Every time when we come up with a new storyline, what does this, how can we in instrument this into being a savior? Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times, you know, people ask me like, hey, are you really a, uh, are you really the Reverend? Are you really a pastor? I said, yes, you know, you know, so can you pray for me? Absolutely, not a problem. And I feel like it's been a way that it's actually spilled over until the reality of some of the fans. And now they're like, I, you know, he, he'll pray for me. I have someone behind me, even when I'm feeling weak. And uh, it's definitely helped out. You know, it's, it's funny the way that God will use us, that he places in our hearts and our lives dreams that, that he puts there, things that we want to do, and then as we do them, if we're willing, he, he will use us. So you've seen God actually using you through, yes. through, this, through this area. Give me an example. Um, for, for example, I met a gentleman at about two and a half years ago. His name is uh, Eddie Petrisky. And, uh, and right now our thoughts are prayers are for him. He's battling with cancer and, you know, he, he lost both of his limbs. And uh, I just seen the status prior to when I, you know, came on set that he's actually about to lose one of his lungs in October. And uh, it was a gentleman that we've stayed connected with each other. And that's uh, been a gentleman that I've prayed for and prayed for. He always updates me when, he's a, when he has a procedure. His wife updates me when they're going out of town. It's been one of those guys to where, you know, almost every other day he's like, thank you for being a friend. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for being there when no one else is there for me. And I feel like that's the thing that I want to let people know that, you know, they're not the only ones fighting the same battle. We've all gone through battles. Um, but like I say, even when I, you know, even when I preach, it's much better to go through a problem with God than without God. And you're, you're 24 years old. Yes. So you got your whole life ahead of you. But what, do you what do you hope that people take away when they come to see you wrestle, when they hear you talk when they see all the verbosity that's going on, you yes. know, with, with the wrestling thing. What do, you, what do you hope that people take away from your life? I, you know, I, I hope that they take away, number one, that, you know, this started as a dream. And then, you know, eventually when I accepted my calling, God was able to merge my calling within my dream. And a lot of times what happens is some people forget where their dreams are, that they even have a dream, you know, until God reawakens that hunger that's within them. I want them just to know that there's no room to give up on your dream. God has placed you in that particular path for a certain reason, but it's up to you to keep that mindset where it needs to be within Christ and allow him to guide you through that. Once you allow him to guide you, each and every one of our dreams can be its own ministry. And what do you plan to do? I mean, it, it's, I'm assuming wrestling is like football, baseball, anything else. Yes. You get, you've only got so many years Absolutely. in it. So what do, you, what do you hope to do? What is your long term? Uh, on, honestly, my long-term goal is to take this wrestling business as far as it goes. You know, naturally, we know our body won't last always. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's some, some point in time where that notoriety that I get from it, I spill it right back over into the media and still people see that living testimony of my life and see what God has brought me through, they know that they can be brought through some of the same stuff, if not worse, because we do serve a, we serve a big God. Well, you're something, brother. You may you may look out uh, in, in that arena in West Newton someday and see Kirk and Kellen and Sydney and I. You know what? I going, already okay, told them. go Rev. You know what? I, ho I hope, hope, they, hope they bring the chairs, the tables. We're having, we're having a good time, man. I'm definitely make sure to get well, you guys we'll, out. We'll put Robin in the front row because she's a pro <laughs> wrestling fan in, in the extreme. Well, thanks, Ronnell. As uh, or we should say, the Rev. Appreciate you being here. I appreciate and, it. And uh, we're we're. You know, with, with, with our faith, we see God change the world, and you can use your faith in all kinds of different ways. And I'm grateful that uh, we've got the, the wrestling yes. story here. Now with more scoop, we've got Sydney. What do you have for us tonight, Sydney?
says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. And one little boy has gone viral showing that his strength isn't something that he wrestles with. Take a look. Go. <laughs> That's crazy. What do you think, Tim? Well, I think I'm not letting you guys watch any more TV because I think that's where you got the idea <laughs> for the tease in the show. <laughs> <laughs> all this violence, all this violence is funny. Yeah. That was very funny. He's Thanks, Sid. Appreciate dude. it. And now it's time, if the guys are ready, for their news of the day. Guys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. Kellen, tell them. <laughs> Today is National Breadstick Day. And did you know that the breadstick was created in the 14th century in northern Italy? And the wonderful part about breadsticks is that you can eat them in a variety of ways. Like one of my favorite, garlic parmesan. You can dip these in ranch dressing with Alfredo sauce or spaghetti sauce. Or also one of my favorites with cinnamon and sugar. So go get some breadsticks today and uh, maybe bring some for us as well. You know you are unique, right? Even if you're a twin, you're still unique. Go ahead, say it with me, I'm unique. See, there's no one just like you, and there's never ever going to be someone just like you. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 139, 14, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're unique. So with that in mind, are you living your life for yourself or for others in God? See, we were given this amazing gift of life and it was given to you from a loving Heavenly Father to bless you and to bless others. Let me challenge you. Use your life and the time that you've been given to pour out into others, to share your talents, to touch others. And what you'll have in return is that God will overwhelm you with blessings. He'll overwhelm you with encouragement. Now, if you're feeling alone, he'll overwhelm you with family. Now, if you've been told you're worthless or you have no value, understand that those words are lies. Remember, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're unique. God sees you. He loves you. And he has a wonderful plan for you. If you need a challenge or if you need to know that you're valued, either way, call our friends at 888-665-4483. Tell them what you need. They'll pray with you and you'll be changed. Thanks for watching. If you want more information about The Rev, email us at nightlife at ctvn.org. And as always, I hope that we have brought some light into your night. From all of us here at Nightlife, blessings. And we'll see you next time. Guys, you ready to take uh, us up? Tim, we have more time. Robin, we, we have more time. We this is Robin, time. everybody, in case you have no, she's our producer. We have more time. Uh, guys, we have more time. All right. So. Um, let me do this. Uh, we're we're going to play the, 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 the game here. So you guys can pull a question. Pull a question and a random question. Random question. One at a time. Okay, Kirk, what's your question? What would you do in life if you knew you couldn't fail? What would you do in life if you knew you couldn't fail? You asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. I'd be the WWE Championship champion, brother. <laughs> oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, got some competition. That's a good one. Competition. I'm a little intimidated. I don't know. Okay. Now, Kellen. <laughs> If you want, you want me to say it, or you want to? Yeah, no, no, okay. no. You tell me. If you could invite four famous people to dinner, who would they be and why? Okay, who would they be? Who Let's do you think? See. Four um, people. Uh, Kirk, you, Sid, and the champ. <laughs> <laughs> That's a free lobster tail for me. He's I smoozing here. <laughs> okay, come on, come on. Now seriously. I'll have you check in the mail. <laughs> Let's see. Um, oh man, that's tough. I would say uh, Michael Jordan, um, Jesus. Uh, Michael Jackson, and for wrestling, I'd have to say Shawn Michaels, the Heartbreak Kid. <laughs> well, good deal. Well, that's that's <laughs> very cool. Let me let, let me just do do one more with both of you. Okay, okay. you ready? Okay. Uh, favorite childhood memory. Oh man, favorite childhood. Oh, uh, going to Toronto on vacation was it 1988? Yeah, we were about six months old. 
six months old. <laughs> All right, we're at the I seven. I got shoes older than <laughs> two or three. <laughs> now we were seven, I think. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I remember that. That was a great time. Okay. I'd probably say just swimming in our pools every summer and growing up as a kid. That was a lot of fun. Swimming in your pools. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, let me do one more with you. Okay, and then we'll go from there. Uh, what was the best vacation you ever taken? You said Toronto, but let's skip skip that. Come on, give me give Orlando, us some Florida. Orlando, Florida. Yeah, definitely Orlando. Absolutely. Say so like go to see the Mouse House. Yeah, yes. Universal, Universal, Disney World, Daytona Beach too. Daytona okay. Beach too. Okay, good deal. Okay, now I'm gonna run over here and ask these guys some stuff. Are you ready? No, no. Ready? Random, random, ready. random questions. Ready. Random questions. Uh, here you are. You're, you're the new guy here, and you're getting all these random oh, questions. Man. Okay, you, you ready? Put me on. All right. Okay, here we go. Oh. Uh -oh. it, this, this should have been Sydney's, but I'll throw out your weight. Now, remember, your wife is probably watching this okay. program. I tell love us, you. Tell us about your first kiss. Uh, first kiss. Um, actually, I think, I think it was right after one of my, uh, one of my uncle's uh, birthday parties, and I asked her out. That was actually our first kiss. I asked her to be my girlfriend. And uh, then Is I this your wife or somebody else? This is my wife. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, first kiss. I'm talking. Just checking. First, wait, first kiss. I can't remember that. I can't remember that. Clearly, my wife's kiss was the only one I can remember, so, not, so that's a good thing. So I forgot the rest. Oh, good answer. You're such a wise man. <laughs> you, must, you must have had Dion helping, helping you, uh, Dion Edmonds helping you with yeah. your free You know, you know what? It worked out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sydney, let me throw one your way. Favorite smell and memory that it brings? Uh, <laughs> I like smelling Jake's t shirts. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> This is, this is a family show, you know. It's a family show. What she means is just she, she has great our, our laundry detergent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Yes, you do use great laundry detergent. Okay. We're, we'll leave it at that, okay? Um, oops, that, that one we asked before. Let me pull another one out here. Are you ready? Absolutely. Rev, let's see. Uh, do you have a hidden talent? And demonstrate, please. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, do I have a hidden talent? Hidden talent. Yes. Well, I don't, I, don't think it, I don't think it's hidden, but I'm actually a magician. I don't know if I can demonstrate that. I did it for, uh, for Sunday schools and youth services and everything like that. Oh, what do you, what, what do, you do? What kind of tricks, tricks do you do? Uh, you know, tricks is in, you know, color magic or disappearing or, you know, cards. I'm very tremendous with cards. Uh, so if we ever did anything, you know, backstage or anything, definitely get me on the cards. Good. Okay. Well, well we may do that. Robin, you got that written down? He's, he's a magician. Okay. Sid, you ready? Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite thing to do by yourself? My favorite thing to do by myself, uh, I would definitely have to say I love going to a coffee shop and having my Bible out, listening to some indie, neo-soul music, and just people watching. And I really like listening to God, so that's my favorite thing to do by myself. Oh, cool. Good yeah. job. Good answer. You guys, you guys are good. These, these guys are pretty deep over here. It's pretty deep, pretty deep. Are you guys, are you guys ready to take us out? You think you, think you could play it. something that that just kind of wraps up the pro wrestling, indie soul music vibe that's, you know, that, that, that we're talking about over here. That's a lot of pressure, but <laughs> okay. we'll do what we can. Okay, well, we just want to remind you, we love you, and we'll see you next time on Nightlife. Guys, take us out. How did I get here? And what did I do to deserve her best? It seems so unfair. I'm saying, why did it have to be me? See, I live by faith. Lord, you know it's true. And every day that I live, I live for you. Oh, but now it seems you're so far away. Something's gotta change I want to be last So everyone can see through my life That you're my everything I want to be last Got so many problems And so many questions unanswered <laughs> Like, where do I go? Oh, what do I do? To receive all that you have for me. See, I must admit that living like this is not what I had in mind. It's not what I had in mind.
than mine. But I'm calling on you. I'm calling on you. See through my life that you're my everything. I wanna be blessed. You know I'm tired of being this way. Something's gotta change. I wanna be blessed so everyone can see through my life that you're my everything. I wanna be blessed. When the world looks into my Well, tonight's topic is we'll wrestling with your faith. And there is no one better to talk about. There's a shadow on my head. Praise the Lord. You know I'm tired of being this way. Something's got to change. I want to be can see through my life that you're my everything. I want to be blessed. You know I'm tired of being this way. Something's got to change. I want to be blessed so everyone can see through my life that you're my everything. 